Hello, and welcome to the Child Welfare Capacity Building Center for States Training of Trainers, Child Welfare Response to Child and Youth Sex Trafficking Part 2 Conference Call. Today's call is being recorded. Before we begin, I would like to turn it over to Christy Sinkovich of the Center. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you're calling from today. I'll just be go uh, going over a few housekeeping items. As the operator noted, this webinar is being recorded. This webinar is also interactive and will feature some polling and some short answer questions. You'll notice in the right-hand side of your screen, you have a handouts pod, which you can access um, the single handout today. If you have any technical difficulties, you can email my colleague Meredith Pacilli at icfi.com, also noted, noted in your participant chat. The Center for States is pleased to offer CEUs or continuing education units for this session. To qualify for CEUs, please ensure that you log in the beginning of the webinar and log out at the end. If you experience any technical problems during the presentation, feel free to also type in the chat. Uh, following this presentation, you'll receive an email with a webinar evaluation and CEU link. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Jennifer Marcelli of the Center. Hi, thank you so much, um, and welcome everybody to our um, webinar today. Um, we appreciate you guys all joining um, for the release of our Sex Trafficking Part 2 learning experience. Um, so I'm going to um, quickly go over um, the introduction for the day. Um, you'll hear from myself. I'm Jennifer Marcelli. I'm the program area manager um, for the focus area related to PL113183. 113 um, you'll also hear a lot from Brenda Lockwood today. Um, she's the lead curriculum developer for sex trafficking curricula. And then Hung Fo, who is the lead evaluator for this learning experience. So before we get started um, into um, going over the learning experience, I just wanted to give a brief overview of um, the Child Welfare Capacity Building Collaborative um, and the Center for States. So in October of 2014, the U.S. Health and Human Services Administration for Children and Families um, Children's Bureau awarded ICF International with a contract to establish uh, this new Child Welfare Capacity Building um, Collaborative, which we the collaborative. Um, so the Center for the Center for Tribes and the Center for Courts um, all partner together uh, to form the collaborative and it consolidates services that were previously provided by the National Resource Centers. Um, and this consolidation increases coordination, leverages resources, and provides more strategic service. The collaborative's goal uh, is to work with partners and jurisdictions to support capacity building. Um, that will lead to improved outcomes for children and family. Um, on the next slide, you'll see that the collaborative, we do this by partnering with states, territories, tribes, and courts to identify, design, and implement innovative solutions that meet the unique needs of each jurisdiction. So the Center for States, um, on the next slide, you'll see um, aims to provide evidence-based capacity building support, provide, um, improved performance and support states and territories in effectively initiating, implementing, and sustaining change. And really to achieve this goal, the center works with its partners to create and deliver coordinated, inclusive, and well-informed capacity building services. And one of the ways in which we do this um, is to assess agency needs and develop individual solutions for the center. And on the next slide, you'll see we do this using five categories or dimensions of capacity to guide approach. And on the screen, you'll see those five. Um, they're resources, infrastructure, knowledge and skills, culture and, and engagement and partnership. And the Center for States um, serves state and territorial public child welfare agencies and Title IV-E waiver demonstration jurisdictions. And ICF supports the Center for States where Maggie Bishop is our executive director. And you might recognize ICF International from its work on welfare information gateway as ICF has a long history of working on technical assistance contracts with um, the Children's Bureau and other agencies. 
And the Center for States is designed to support the Children's Bureau's vision of providing strategic evidence and forms to really build the capacity of state and territorial public child welfare agencies. And the center, as I've stated on previous slides, really support child welfare agencies in effectively initiating and sustaining change and really with a focus on innovation. And our goals, you know, as I, again, as I stated on some previous slides, are really to improve system, organizational, and program performance and significantly enhance safety, permanency, and well-being of children, youth, and families. And our approach is really an evidence-based capacity building services um, for the child welfare field. And finally, I'm just going to take through our categories of service, and we are organized into three categories. There's universal services, constituency services, and tailored services. And each of these areas aim to fulfill the needs of child welfare professionals and organizations, as well as support them in their goals. The universal services really promote engagement among a broad nationwide audience of state and agency professionals, much like you say. Um, the universal services team does this by developing and providing resources, tools, and products, like this learning experience. And the center's constituency services include also learning experiences and peer networking op opportunities that are aimed at a, a target of individuals or professional cohorts. And then finally, we have tailored services, which provide direct capacity building support to state agencies and territories focused on capacity building and implementation efforts. So now I'm going to turn it over to Brenda Lockwood, who is going to go through this great learning experience, and um, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Brenda? Thanks, Jennifer. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, looks like some folks were having a little bit of difficulty with the with the audio, so hopefully we've gotten that figured out. Um, so we'll just move on, and and um, just wanted to add a quick reminder that if you have any questions um, throughout the remainder of the session, you can go ahead and type your questions into the chat feature, into the, part the participant chat pod, um, and we will get to those questions. Um, well, I'll also be asking um, some questions throughout the um, throughout the session, and we'll want your feedback. And so that's where we will ask you to type your feedback in response to the questions that I have for you. So uh, keep the the participant chat frame or pod open so that you can utilize it um, during the session. So again, my name is Brenda Lockwood, and I work with the constituency services um, at the Capacity Building Center for States, and um, I am the, the lead curriculum writer for this curriculum and worked with uh, a couple of subject matter experts. Um, Amber, Amber McDonald is one of our subject matter experts, and um, Melissa Snow who's the other um, subject matter expert that helped um, really pull together the content for this curriculum. So for today, what we want to cover is, or what we want to make sure that we do is um, provide you with some understanding about how to access the curriculum, the materials and resources, um, give you some, some brief background on, on the content for each module, um, and identify the key learning points for each of the modules, um, and then provide you with some information about um, the evaluation that is available to this, um, uh, to this curriculum. So, going on to the next slide, um, we do have a polling question for you. Um, so you'll just need to click yes or no for this polling question, and it would just help me out to know um, if folks have had an opportunity to look at the materials yet um, for participating today. It looks like a few of you have had an opportunity to, to look at the material, which is good. Um, so again, we'll in a minute we'll uh, provide an opportunity to show you how to get, how to go how to navigate to the site to find the curriculum materials and how to how to um, download that information. So let's do um, let's do just that. So um, there are for this particular um, curriculum there are three distinct modules. Uh, there's module one, which is the intake and investigations curriculum, which is really focused on folks who work in intake and investigations. 
Module 2, which is for the ongoing services units, um, and 3 for, um, for caregivers. Um, so these modules really are, um, uh, they are part two to the Children's Bureau's um, package of training curriculum related to um, the child, um, child and Youth Sex Trafficking Laws, PL113-183. We launched part one back in December. Some of you may have participated in that. Um, in that webinar, or maybe are currently using those curriculum materials. So these these modules will um, help enhance that training, um, and you can use or you can use them as a standalone training, um, you know, or perhaps an advanced training for your staff. So let's see. Um, the other the other element of these particular cur curriculum modules, which I think is really the most significant aspect of these curriculum is that we have woven through each of them, each of the modules, um, some video clips that provide um, really important information about skills and strategies for engaging with child and youth survivors of sex trafficking. Um, we really encourage you and we'll, we'll have an opportunity to look at the uh, one of the videos or a, 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 just a brief um, a few minutes of one of the videos. Um, we really encourage you to, if you are training the curriculum, if you're the one that will be facilitated in training, really encourage you to really to watch all of the all of the, the videos that are available, so that you can craft some questions, perhaps, or some discussion points for your audience that you will be training. So um, just keep that in mind um, as you prepare yourself to deliver these curriculum. So with each with each of the modules. Each module will we provide you with a curriculum guide, handouts, and um, videos. And so we'll navigate to the site in a moment so you can see where to and how to download, download that, um, that content for yourselves to use in your agencies. So we're going to, Christy, my, my right hand, my right hand gal for this <laughs> webinar is going to help us get to the training um, to our our um, learning management system. So, Christy, if you could navigate us to the site. So, to access the materials, you'll want to go to the Capacity Building, um, Capacity Building Center's website at capacity.childwelfare.gov backslash states backslash. And when you get to that page, you will um, you'll see a, a series of tabs in the blue header there at the top of the page, and you'll want to click on the Learn tab. And once you click there, you'll get to our Learning Management System homepage where you'll see our course catalog. And within that course catalog, you will want to identify the training that you're looking for. Um, there's, and you see on the screen here, we have several available. Um, and so there's part one you see on the left side there, and you can I won't have you click there yet, um, Christy, but just, just to point that out, that's part one. That's our, that was the initial um, tr training curriculum that we launched in December. And so here's part two. So in order to access materials, you'll click on this link, so click on this tab, um, where, it, and if you are already, if you have a, if you have not already done so, you'll need to register for a, um, so a log for login information to access the materials. So I don't know if, if that's the next. Are you gonna log, are you gonna navigate to that page, Christy, to the login page, or the registration page, I should say. Uh, so I have a screenshot of the registration because okay. I'm already a registered user, so I can navigate okay. back to that in just a second after the demo. Okay, so we'll, we'll navigate back to the registration page so we can take a look at it. So once you've registered, you can go in and download the materials. And so the first thing you'll see here on the landing page is just a description of the course. And then you will be able to, um, what we want to do, Christy, is really click on probably module one. That will be fine. So we can see all of the materials that are available. So you'll click, you'll click on um, each of the Icons. So if you wanted to download the cur curriculum, you click there, and what you'll see is um, is the um, curriculum guide. So you'll download that, and then you'll want to click.
click on each of the other tabs or the icons, so for the handout and the PowerPoint and the videos. This is what the handouts will look like. And the PowerPoint presentation and then the videos. And we'll show a video here in a minute. But just um, just a quick um, note to say that we've provided the, the materials so that you can go in and customize them for yourself so that you can make them more relevant to the audience um, that you are training. So we encourage you to go in and, and, and add whatever information or take away whatever information um, to make it more relevant for, again, for your agency or for your audience. So let's see. We wanted to are we going to be able to show one of the videos? Or just a brief clip of the video, Christy? Unfortunately, since our audio is not bridged with voice over IP, we're unable to show it. Um, but okay. we can actually navigate folks to, to know where the videos are located. Oh, okay. Do you want to do that? Are you, so just for folks on the phone, we were hoping to be able to show you a video, a, a clip from one of the videos, but it sounds like we're not going to be able to do that now. So um, what you'll do is while you're on the screen, when you're downloading all the other content, the handout, the PowerPoint, the curriculum guide, you will want to also download the videos, which will be available um, through those icons there on the page. Are you going to be able to do that to just show them? No. Yes, they're huge files. Um, so they are currently downloading in my uh, screen. Oh, okay. See on the lower <laughs> left here. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So something to keep in mind for folks on the phone is that yeah, they're they're going to be big files. So it may take a few minutes for you to be able to download all of the all of the, the data that comes along with them. So well, maybe we'll just move on. Um, I think. Um, We'll just have to leave it at that and point out that the you'll need to download the videos, each of them separately, I believe. Um, so, Christy, if you click, when you clicked on the download um, tab, did that start downloading all of the videos for you, or just did you have to go, Correct. And go in and – Okay. Did you Correct. just download but, them and they all download mm -hmm. at the same time? Mm-hmm. Okay. So there is a really quick brief – here's where you find them. So you navigate to our site. Go to the learning management system and download all the materials. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn things over to Hung so that, oh, wait, maybe we wanted to look at the registration page. So here's what the registration page will look like. If you don't already have an account or login information for our site, when you go to our learning management system, um, so that Learn tab, you will need to create a, um, you know, register yourself to use the system. Any other information that they need to know about this particular page, Christy? Create an account. I can just uh, refer back to the previous slide, which is um, what you noted uh, with the, the link. Um, but that is all for the registration. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to... Uh, move on to the evaluation slides and turn things over to Hung. Which, yeah. so, All right. Oh. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, good morning or afternoon, everyone. My name is Hung Fo, and I'm with the center's evaluation team. Um, so uh, I'm going to spend about five minutes talking about the evaluation. So please stay with me. I'm going to try and make evaluation as exciting as possible. I know in some circles that is tough to do, but um, here at the center, we are um, totally committed um, to supporting um, this um, center to be a learning organization on the evaluation team. And to do this, um, we really um, need to learn more about um, learning experiences such as um, So um, we really want to better understand if the learning experience is effective. We want to better understand people are sort of 
experiencing the products and services that they're interacting with in order that we can really improve the products and services um, that we deliver to you. So um, for this learning experience, there is a two-part evaluation that we would like to ask you to participate in. Part one of the evaluation you can see on your screen is really a, an evaluation of your satisfaction with the curriculum. So it's you as the trainer, you as the program director or manager, the person who is responsible for administering this um, training program. Um, we would really like to better understand sort of um, you, how relevant the curriculum is to you and your agency and really um, any suggestions you have for improvement as well. Um, and then the second part, which I'm going to um, talk about on the next slide, is really better understanding the actual impact of the curriculum. So um, the one thing I should mention is um, when Christy was on the screen where the learning value or learning experience was, you may have noticed that there is a survey that you can take when you're on the landing page of the learning experience. It says, take the survey. It's like this huge button that's underneath the title. So that's one way as a trainer or a program developer that you can provide some feedback to us. So that's sort of part of the evaluation. Part two, really, you can get access to in the um, the actual download of the curriculum itself. So if you download all of the materials of the curriculum, one of the things that you will get is sort of a series of documents called the evaluation package. Um, you can also get a preview of the guide document if you the test slash evaluation preview. Um, that gives you sort of a two to three page sort of um, explanation of the evaluation package uh, and essentially it has detailed instructions how to administer the instruments. Um, in that package what we've included are web-based instruments that you as the trainers or program developers use uh, and the great thing about these instruments is one they're already created so we've created pre and post testing um, so that you can administer to your trainees as you would, um, you take this curriculum, you adapt it, and, it um, and then you can administer these evaluation instruments. Um, the second benefit in using sort of the web-based instruments is that you can get, we will provide you with the analysis and um, the reports of the results. So, um, and this will include not only information about how your trainees did from pre to post training, um, but also any feedback that they have for the trainers as well. So we've included lots of questions in there about um, the effect of the trainers, the delivery, um, sort of their knowledge and skill um, in the training environment. So. Um, because the curriculum is, uh, you're able to adapt the curriculum, we also have an option where you don't want to use the web-based instruments. Essentially what you would do is take the link that we've provided in one of those documents and sort of send that to trainees. If you don't want to use that, you can also use hard copies that you can provide during the training. Uh, and if you want use that and then certainly um, you can sort of adapt that. The only downside to that is that we would not be able to provide results if you use the hard copy version. So that's part two of the training evaluation. Um, and then on the next slide um, includes some information uh, about myself. Um, so one Things that we'd like to do as well, and we've been doing this with some other agencies for the first sex trafficking learning experience, is really reaching out to um, participants. So I may be in touch with some of you who are participating in this webinar, really to get a sense of where you and your agency are in implementing um, the curriculum, and then I ask for your participation in some of these evaluation um, activities. 
at any time, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Hungfo, at hung dot pho at icfi dot com or dot com. Um, so thank you again for being a part of today's webinar, and um, I. Really looking forward to um, hearing from you all and getting your feedback on the curriculum. Brenda, I'm now going to um, turn things back to you and um, appreciate the time. Great. Thank you, Hung. Yeah, the evaluation is really an important um, piece of this for, for us to be able to continue to improve um, and create learning experiences that are going to um, be meaningful for, for the field. So please um, do consider participating in the evaluation. I did see just a moment ago a question come through on the participant chat to just restate the website, and I will do that. It is capacity.childwelfare.gov backslash state backslash. And you'll be able to access both, both part one curriculum and this curriculum on that same website. Okay, so let's, um, let's Let's take a moment to sort of review the overarching goals of the um, Preventing, Tra Preventing Sex Trafficking and Strengthening Families Act, otherwise known as PO 113-183. So the overarching goals for um, this curriculum, for this training curriculum anyway, um, is to provide a, um, to, it is to be is, it, is to provide a comprehensive plan or to be part of a, a comprehensive plan by the Children's Bureau to develop um, a, an array of capacity building resources that support effective implementation of PL 113 183. So, part one curriculum, the Child Welfare Response to Child and Youth Sex Trafficking, um, was created to help build knowledge and awareness for participants regarding the provisions of the legislation and the unique needs of survivors of sex trafficking. So this curriculum, part two, aims to translate some of that knowledge and awareness into skill development. So we really tried to create um, a curriculum here where we can um, do some skill building with participants. Um, so the overarching goals of these training modules related to PL 113-183 are really to increase skills related to engaging child and youth, sex, um, child and youth survivors of sex trafficking. Um, to help create changes in culture and climate to reflect increased commitment to focus on sex trafficking um, and enhanced engagement and partnerships to address PL 113-183. So again, the, these, both of these training curriculum really are meant, are intended to help support the implementation of this legislation. We can move on to the next slide. So we're just going to do a brief walkthrough of each of the modules. Um, there's three modules in this curriculum package that are available for you um, with a specific focus for each audience. Um, let's see, so if we can go on to the next slide. Just a word about um, the curriculum guide itself, which you will find on our website. So each curriculum guide um, provides, is, is, it provides um, you know, discrete units. So you'll see as you look at the curriculum guide that there, for example, in the ongoing services provision module, um, there are five separate units. And again, we really hope that you'll go in and look at the units and adapt them and customize them so that they're relevant for your particular audience. Each of the curriculum guides provides identification of the materials that you'll need to successfully facilitate each module. And we also provide step-by-step -step talking points um, so that you can, you know, provide the, provide the training, um, you know, with the knowledge base provided in the curriculum guide. So I wanted to um, just refer to the handout. You'll see in the handouts pod that it's available um, for download. And it is really meant to be sort of a desk reference at a glance for you um, to utilize so that you can, um, you know, get yourself prepared, I guess, to, to deliver the curriculum. So I'm going to use this handout, the at a glance um, handout, to help walk through each of the each of the modules and the key learning points. So the first module is for intake and investigations. And again, so that that's the 
as the title says, it's it's for folks who are doing that initial um, intake element or aspect of child welfare casework, and um, it's for it, it's intended to help participants understand and describe effective identification, documentation, reporting, and service delivery for children and youth under the child welfare agency's care and supervision who are victims or at risk of becoming victims of sex trafficking. Key learning points for this particular module are for participants to understand which factors increase the vulnerability of survivors and how to maintain their safety, um, for participants to gain knowledge of effective tools and approaches to engage survivors in child sex trafficking, and to develop the ability to utilize effective approaches to engage survivors of sex trafficking during the intake and investigation process. So, as I mentioned, there are, there are videos that are available, and I, I wanted to note that the videos, um, the content of the videos really focuses on um, skill building and, you know, how to approach the work um, in each of these um, the delivery areas, whether it's investigations or ongoing services or um, uh, foster care providers. And the presenter in, um, in the video is Amber McDonald, and she is a licensed clinical social worker who has conducted research that focuses on the factors contributing to domestic minor sex trafficking and self-narratives of youth involved in sex trafficking. Um, she's worked for more than 10 years with children who have experienced sexual exploitation, and in the video, she shares her expertise around engaging children and youth who are victims of sex trafficking. So each curriculum module has a specific, um, you know, video that goes with it, and each of the curriculum guides provides um, discussion, questions, um, and um, suggestions for how to utilize the, the videos um, within the, within the um, training module. So with this unit, Module 1, Intake and Investigations, it is broken down into five different units. The three-hour curriculum, um, if you added additional content, obviously it would um, go over that amount of time. So um, it's five separate units, uh, and there, with, this, with this module there are four handouts that um, accompany the curriculum guide um, handouts for participants. We have um, a couple of different types of activities that get participants um, really thinking about um, you know, how to interact and how to engage with youth who um, they may encounter who have experienced um, sex trafficking. And I also wanted to point out, again, we, we strongly encourage customization of, of the materials, and we did provide um, on the at a glance handout some links to um, different um, well, additional handouts or additional content that you could include um, if it's relevant, which it likely is <laughs> relevant for, or if it's particularly um, salient for your, your audience. Um, the next module is Module 2. What's for the next? Oh, sorry, I have a question here. So when you think about your staff who do intake and investigations in particular, what challenges do your staff face when engaging child and youth survivors currently? And if you could use your um, chat feature to respond to that question, it'd be, it'd be great. What challenges are they currently facing in engaging this population? Youth are closed off, yes. They'll be, they're reluctant to speak with you. And I do believe that Amber, our presenter in the videos, does address, um, does address that issue. Um, obviously, the degree of trauma, yeah, how much to probe, what questions to ask, and, it, that, and that is definitely something Amber addresses in the video. Um, yeah, not enough training for staff. So hopefully, these modules will help, um, help with that. Um, oh yeah, availability of trauma-informed services can be a real challenge. Um, and I do think that throughout the videos, Amber um, does mention different ways of um, collaborating and partnering with, with agencies within your community to um, help provide those trauma-informed services or create them. Um, yeah, so it sounds like 
um, you know, a need for developing knowledge um, and training for staff. Yeah, youth running away. Um, yeah, so lots of challenges. And again, um, seeing your your comments to this question, I feel reassured that we um, focused on the right things in the videos, or at least Amber did um, focused on the right things. So. As you watch the videos, you'll um, hopefully be able to start gleaning some new um, in new ways of approaching your work um, that will address some of these challenges that you're currently facing. Okay, great responses, you guys. We really appreciate it. Um, okay, they're still still coming at us. <laughs> these are great comments. Um, yeah, difficulty finding qualified clinical providers to meet needs of youth. Okay. Okay. So thanks for the responses to that. I think we'll, we're going to move on, and uh, I appreciate everyone's input. Um, and like I said, um, I do feel that I mean, as you see the videos and the comments that Amber has and, and the expertise that she shares, um, I'm hopeful that you'll be able to maybe take some of that information and, and start addressing some of these some of these challenges. So thank you. I think I think we'll move on to the next one. So the next slide. So the next unit. Thank you everybody for your responses. So module two is aimed at our ongoing services um, for, um, staff. And um, the key learning points for this particular module are for participants to understand the unique needs of survivors of sex trafficking and how to engage them. Um, to develop the skills and ability to recognize survivor strengths um, and use those strengths to help develop their case plan, um, and then understand how to connect with sur survivors to culturally appropriate and supportive services, all three very important elements of, in, of ongoing work um, with this population. If you have downloaded the At a Glance um, handout, you'll see that this particular module is broken down into Again, five different um, five different units. It is also 30 minutes long. We have um, the video actually that goes along with this particular module is longer than um, than you know what we included. So there are options for including additional um, clips from the video. We also suggest um, the use of uh, a video called "What Are Pronouns," which is a great way to help facilitate discussion early on in the training around checking our biases. Um, and then we also, again, encourage you to customize this module as well. Um, again, the links that we provide at the, um, in the intake and investigation section of this handout really are relevant to all three of these modules. So we really encourage you to um, customize where appropriate. And with this particular module, there are four handouts and one of them being a um, one of them being a an activity that um, really has participants work with uh, a youth named George and um, practicing ways to um, be survivor centered in how we approach our work with them. So uh, again, five units, three hours. You can extend that time if you uh, include some of the optional videos for this for this uh, module. So our question for this unit is, we would like you to use your chat feature. So we know that there's already good work and good, good services being provided um, to, to child and youth survivors in the field. And so we're curious to know what strategies your ongoing services staff use when engaging survivors currently. Use your chat feature to respond our question, that would be awesome. People are typing, we're just waiting for the, <laughs> the comments to come through. We know that there's a lot of great work that is, is going on out there and again, um, with the video, Amber will provide some great ideas for strategies and some of the handouts will also 
support the videos um, and the suggestions that that Amber makes in the videos around different strategies that, that folks can utilize. Um, so Treasurer Montana says that uh, one strategy that staff are using is to meet their immediate needs first before going on into an investigation. Absolutely. The, the food, clothing, medical needs, etc. Really attending to those needs really key to um, one, to the engagement uh, with the staff, but also to help um, help support the sense of safety for them as well. Um, get to know them first, create a safe connection, absolutely. Um, normalizing their experience. For example, that sounds like a really rough spot you were in. Sometimes kids in that position have to do things they didn't want to do, or you made to do something you didn't want to do. I like that, that's a great strategy. Just really normalize the experience for them in that way. Um, yeah, absolutely, building trust, creating, creating relationships. Absolutely, all, all great um, examples of, of, um, of ways of engaging survivors. And again, I think that as you watch the videos, um, Amber will provide you with some additional strategies, uh, ways to ask questions, ways to approach youth that will draw them in <laughs> versus push them away. Um, she also does provide some, um, some, uh, some thoughts around self-care for staff, which I think is really important in, in, any, uh, in all of the work that we do in child welfare, but in particular around this um, issue, she has some great ideas for how staff can um, take care of themselves when they are engaging with um, kids and youth who are survivors of sex trafficking. One more, working and collaborating with a nonprofit organization, Doors to Freedom, that specializes in working with, with youth survivors of sex trafficking. Awesome. So you're 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 working um, in partnership with a, a community organization that sounds like it's really specialized in in working with this population. So all great strategies. Hey, right, thank you for your um, your your input into that question. Let's move on to looking at number three. So module three is for caregivers, for foster care providers, kinship care providers who are providing care for this population. Um, the key learning points um, here for this module are really for caregivers to understand the unique needs of survivors and, again, how to engage them. Um, we also aim to really help build um, skills and knowledge um, and use of strategies to engage kids and youth, children and youth, and, and who are victims of sex trafficking and also um, provide some opportunities in the training for um, practicing strategies on how to engage children and youth who are victims of sex trafficking. Um, this module is two hours. It's a little bit shorter than the others. Um, again, there are opportunities for, um, for you to, to make it longer um, by including additional videos um, and additional content. We really, again, encourage you to do that. So if you look at the at a glance handout, this particular module only has um, Three units, because it is only two hours long. Um, three units and three um, different um, handouts that go along with it. We utilize um, similar at activity in this unit related to um, practicing engaging with the youth. In this case, his name is George, um, and applying, um, having opportunities to practice um, to practice applying the strategies um, that um, they will learn from Amber. Um, in the videos that are shared. So that is Caregiver Curriculum 3. Um, and again, what I really encourage you to do prior to, and I'm sure you will do this anyways, but I'm going to re <laughs> repeat it, is I really encourage you to, to sit down and watch the videos um, so that you can really customize the questions or the debrief or the discussion for the you know, for your agency or the staff that, that you will be staffing, um, caregivers that you will be training, you know them, and the needs that they have in relationship in relation to engaging with this population. So um, please feel free to, um, you know, adjust the curriculum <laughs> materials as needed. Um, and if you find, uh, if, you, if you do adjust the curriculum and, um, include additional information and find that it's really rich, we would love to hear about it. So you can always provide feedback on our website about what you did to enhance 
receive even more. And again, I'll say this, that these modules are intended to um, enhance the Part 1 curriculum, or you can utilize, use it as a standalone, um, as a standalone training um, opportunity for your staff. Um, I also think that and you'll see as you watch the videos, you could actually use it as sort of a, you show the videos and use them as sort of a, an in-service training. I know in the agency I worked in, we, our agency offered them uh, an in-service training once a month and on a very, you know, on a variety of topics. And I know I think that the videos would be really conducive to that, to show the video and then have some discussion as a large group around the content um, within the videos. So let's move on to the next question, um, the next question on the next slide. So this question is, in what ways have you seen caregivers succeed in engaging survivors? We know that there's been some examples of great engagement already, even though it is a challenge. Some folks have been really successful at it. I wondered if you have any examples of um, ways in which caregivers have really done a great job of engaging survivors. We'd like to hear about it. Anyone, anyone? In the video, again, Amber will share specific ideas and strategies for caregivers to engage these youth. Um, she provides a little um, uh, some insight, I think, into sort of what what kids who are in care, survivors who are in care, are you know what's going on in their minds and why they do the things they do, like run away from care, and how to really approach that with them. So, I am hopeful that you'll find some usefulness in um, in the videos and in the content for this uh, module to really help support your caregivers um, in engaging. Um, engaging with this population. I see that some people are typing, so we'll wait to see what the responses are. So Melinda says, foster parents I've worked with have made space for youth to participate in age-appropriate activities, returning some childhood to them. That's really important. Really awesome to hear. I like that. Let them just be kids again. Um, approach children with love, forgiveness, and the non-judgmental attitude. Absolutely. With each of these three modules, these curriculums, we spend a little bit of time at the beginning having people sort of do a self-check, as I like to call it. Um, really thinking about how our biases, biases and attitudes play a role or impact and influence how we engage with with this population and really the importance of making sure that our attitudes and <laughs> align with being able to create a safe space um, for for these kids to to be um, to just be kids again and to feel safe um, be safe in in our presence so that's great any other last thoughts about how what you've seen how um, how caregivers have succeeded already in engaging survivors Okay, well then we'll move on. We're just kind of breathing right on through. Um, just another reminder for folks to, um, on the next slide, to see is, uh, again, I've said, it, I've said it plenty of times already, but um, we really do encourage you to customize these materials. That's why we made them as part of the, the goal of the Capacity Building Center is to help you have the capacity to um, build capacity for your staff. And so one way we can do that is offer you curriculum that's already created and that you can just tweak to make it um, more meaningful for your particular audience. Um, okay, so we do have some questions. Um, yeah, oh, it is in PDF. Oh, yeah, well, they were supposed to be uploaded as um, as non-PDF versions, so we'll have to take a look at that. Thank you for letting us know. Um, uh, we'll have to we'll have to figure that out. I don't know if if um, any of my colleagues on the line, Christy or Eric, have any. Hmm. 
We'll take that back. Thank you for letting us know that, Deborah, that they're in PDF because they need to be in a, in a version that you can um, that you can actually customize. So we'll take a look at that. So um, the best I can do, at least at this point, is to say stay tuned, and we'll see what we can do to address that. Um, April had the question: Do you think that the trainer, the trainer, the trainer curriculum for caregivers would be done as a webinar? You could. You absolutely could do it as a webinar. Um, I don't see why not. If your if your um, webinar platform has the capability of showing video, then I would say yes. Um, yes, there is absolutely no reason why it couldn't be done as a video, as a webinar. The video is really key, really important element um, of the of each of these modules. So again, it wouldn't work if it, if you can't show a video. Um, is there an at a glance for part one? Uh, yes, there is. Let's see. Um, Christy, do you know if when they saved the recording from the POT for part one, they also included the at a glance for part one? I can take a look right now and get right back to you. Otherwise, I don't know off the top I, of my head. Otherwise, what I could do is, um, while we're talking, I can send it to you, Christy, and maybe someone can upload it to the handout. Does that work? Yes, it definitely would. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to try and keep talking <laughs> while I'm searching for it. Um, let's see. Somebody else had a question. Let me do the one. Uh, are there other questions? I'll ask my colleagues on the line. Are there other questions that I need to get back to? Oh, Summit, Melinda said that the curriculum she downloaded is, is in both PDF and Word. Thank you. Good. Um, awesome. That's good to know. I thought that, that we had agreed to um, upload them as, as, a, as a Word document so that it was, you know, editable. So, so Deborah, you'll want to go back in and see if you can um, identify the, the Word document. Okay, let's see. Sorry, now I'm looking for this. And Brenda, while you're searching, I just wanted to note that um, we had a question about the download all button, and um, okay. we failed to demo that, but just to mention that um, we, I did hover over that download all button for module one, but you can do that okay. for the full course um, up at the top. Great, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of breezed through that section. So when you go to that, that page to download all the materials, you can download them one by one, you know, download the, the curriculum guide, download the... Um, handouts, or you can just download everything all at once. It may take a little bit longer, but it would save you some time and sitting there and actually clicking on the buttons to download. Okay, so Christy, I'm going to email you this at a glance for part one, and then you can upload it if you have that. You can find it on my desktop again. on its way to Christy. So, yeah, um, other questions? Um, any other questions about I want to slide entitled Training Evaluation. So, Any other questions about the materials, about the content? Um, we kind of breezed through it all. It went really fast. That's what you get when I feel unprepared. I just breeze right through things. <laughs> uh, can we get a copy of your slides? Uh, sure, I think so. Um, Christy, do you have those available to, you mean, uh, do you have those available to um, upload as a handout by chance, Christy? I can. We'll also be um, sending those out with the CEU and evaluation link for oh, okay. today as well. Okay, great. Maybe that would be a better option. Any other questions? Okay, so I see that Christy has uploaded the handout, the modules at a glance, with part one. 
It's Title II modules at a glance final. Um, that is actually for Part 1. <laughs> to be as confusing as we could possibly be. Um, so that will be the added plan to that. And again, part one is also customizable. Um, it's much longer. The modules are much longer um, for that part one because we really dig into the legislation and the implementation of the law and then also things that um, you know supervisors and staff need to really consider when engaging with this population. And then this this particular Part two then just enhances all of that content. So any other questions? Oh. And it looks like, thank you, she renamed it part one modules at a glance, thank you. That makes it a lot less confusing. So it sounds like, Paula, to answer your question and for others, again, just to clarify, we will send out the slides with the email related to um, obtaining CEUs to be able to get that. So we can go on to the CEU slide, um, I think, Christy, um, next one. So the Center for States is pleased to be able to offer CEUs in connection with the webinars that we provide. Um, and so if you're interested in receiving CEUs for social work, counseling, clinical psychology, or licensed marriage and family therapy, we encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity. So following this webinar, everyone that participate, participated will receive an email with the link and instructions on how to apply for those CEUs. Um, and we are also interested in your feedback. So um, you can provide feedback uh, by responding to the email with the CEU instructions. like someone else is typing a question. Any last questions before we sign off? That less than an, less than 90 minutes. For part one, do supervisors and administrators need to take the caseworkers course or is it standalone? We strongly encourage them to take the caseworkers course because the caseworker module provides all the foundational information about um, implementation of the law. So you'll see if you look at the, um, the materials we have in there, <laughs> a couple of different places that we really encourage people. Um, I know it's a lot to ask, especially for administrators to sit through a day and a half training, um, but it would be well worth their while um, because, again, it is a foundational training. And then um, the supervisor and administrator curriculum does kind of build off of that. It's not that you know, if they didn't attend the caseworker one, that they would be lost in the supervisor training or in the um, administrator training. But we really do strongly encourage them to participate to just get some of that foundational uh, information. No, not necessarily. Admins, admins do not necessarily do not need to attend supervisor training. They could. I think it'd be pretty swell if they did, <laughs> but they do not need to. Um, and and. Caregivers do not need to attend the, the caseworker training either. Um, yeah. Uh, so yes. Uh, okay. So one or the other in addition to caregivers. Yes. So again, the, the part one webinar is available, and you can watch that. So it's pretty similar to the one we just you know kind of walk through, similar to what we did today. Um, a little bit more in depth, perhaps. Um, Christy, is that the link? Did you provide the link? Uh, or maybe you could provide the link again to where they can find part one? Um, so it will be on CapLearn or on the you know on our website. Um, so it'll be available there. So you could um, download that and, and watch that as well, or listen in on that as well. Any other questions? All right, so again, watch for an email about the CEUs and um, apply for those if that's relevant for you. We hope that you find some usefulness in these modules. We are pretty proud of them. Amber did a great job with the videos, and so we hope that you'll um, 
we'll be able to um, really get some great new um, strategies and ideas um, and skills from them. So thank you. Thank you. Please let us know what you thought of today's webinar. Oh, yes, and Meredith just posted a link for comments, so thank you, Meredith. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks again for joining us today.